Okay, we've been, we defined asymptotes, and now let's figure out how to find them, because that's what's going to stick more than the definitions. So let's just go through the different types. We'll start with vertical asymptotes. Um, vertical asymptotes, um, assuming p of x and q of x don't have common factors, meaning you factor and nothing simplifies. We'll see what happens with that later. Um, anytime the denominator equals 0, then x of a is a vertical asymptote. And that's because those are not in the domain. So the graph can never cross those values. So in this first example, it's when the denominator equals 0. We're not worried about the top. We can plug any number into the top, but we can't make the denominator 0, right? So the denominator can't be 0. So x squared minus 9 gives me what? x plus 3, x minus 3. So x can't equal 3 or negative 3 for domain. And that is what creates asymptotes. So vertical asymptotes are at x equals 3 or negative 3. And then when we do get into graphing, it'll look like this. So our graph will actually have three pieces. One, two, three. We'll talk about that later. Right now we're just finding asymptotes. How about the next one? Um, does this have vertical asymptotes? Remember, the denominator can't be 0. x squared plus 4 can't be 0, um, but that's never equal to 0. So that means we have no vertical asymptotes. That's it. Um, so let's talk about what happens if they do have those common factors. So if they have common factors, um, they might have x minus a in common. That's just some factor. So that'll cancel out, which means that actually doesn't create an asymptote, um, even though x equals a is not in the domain. Instead, it creates a whole. So let's look at an example to make sense. So x plus 1, x minus 1 would be the same as x squared minus 1. And then we get x minus 1. So x minus 1 cancels out. x equals 1 is still not in the domain, um, but it's not a vertical asymptote. So what does it do instead? This is going to be actually the graph of x plus 1. So we have 1. We start at 1. We go up 1, over 1, up 1, over 1, up 1, over 1, and we get a line. But x equals 1 is not in the domain, so it creates a hole. So it looks like a line with a hole at x equals 1. So vertical asymptotes are when the denominator is equal to 0 and it doesn't cancel out. Holes are when the denominator is equal to 0, but it does cancel out. So hopefully that helps us see the difference. Um, let's find horizontal asymptotes. It's a little messier, a little less fast. Um, so we learned that polynomials have the same end behavior as the leading term. And so that's actually going to be the tr same here. It's going to have the same behavior as the leading terms. Same end behavior. Not all behavior, right? Just the end behavior. So it'll be an to the x over n to bm to the x over m. I'm using n and m. I'm using different letters because they might be different degrees. So there's three different cases. Um, so case one is the easiest one if n equals m. So that means we'll have a n over x n over b m over x n because they're equal. So those will cancel out. So we'll get a n over b m, which means the graph is going to approach this number. That's what this means. and it creates an asymptote. 
So when the degrees are the same, we get y equals a n over b m as an asymptote. The n behavior is approaching this number. Um, what happens when, what order do I want? I want to do n is less than m. So I'm going to rewrite this as x to the n minus m, right, combining powers. If n is smaller, then n minus m would be negative because it's a smaller number minus a bigger number. So then I'm going to rewrite this as bm x to the m minus n to move it to the bottom, which means it'll go to zero because what's happening here is x is getting big. Um, we're looking at n behavior. Remember, n behavior is x going to infinity or negative infinity. So this denominator is going to get really big, so this is going to go to zero. So in this case, when the degree is less than, um, when the degree on top is less than bottom, y equals zero is an asymptote. So you may have learned these before and memorized them, but didn't talk about end behavior. And then the last example is the opposite. So n is bigger than m. So n minus m would be a positive power now. And we're plugging in really big numbers of x's. So this is actually just going to really big powers. So this is going to infinity, which means there is no asymptote. And let's do examples with numbers, and I think it gets easier. It'll be less vague with numbers. So let's just look at asymptotes for each. So what I like to do is I like to circle the leading terms. So leading terms tell us n behavior. So this function, as x goes to infinity, would be approaching x squared over 2x squared. Right, this is n behavior. That's why I'm using an arrow and not an equal sign. And so then what do we get? We get 1 half. So y equals 1 half is my horizontal asymptote. And I like just doing this, then I don't have to memorize the cases. The leading terms determine the cases for me. But this was part of the first case. The degrees were equal. But now I'm not memorizing anything. I'm just circling the leading terms every time. So in the next one, the leading terms are x cubed and 4x to the fourth. So I'm not memorizing the rules, but the bottom one happens to be a bigger degree. Um, so if I simplify this, this would be 1 over 4x cubed, which would approach 0, right? If I'm plugging in really big numbers in the denominator, this would go to 0. So that's why y equals 0 is my horizontal asymptote, which would be the second case. You're welcome to memorize the cases, but if I can memorize less, I'm happier. So it goes to 0 because the bottom degree was bigger, but this is really the logic behind that. And so then the last one, leading terms, would be 4x cubed, 4x to the fourth over x, which is 4x cubed. So this would actually behave like 4x cubed, which means there's no horizontal asymptote because it goes to infinity, it gets big. But it also tells us that it has this end behavior back from polynomials. So hopefully this is helpful. Uh, I like to just look at leading terms rather than memorizing cases. Um, so I'll see you back for the next video. We got a, um, the last one is slant asymptotes.